Hi, chemistry students. I want to talk a little bit about the activation energy and kind of get a, a feel for what it means and what the size, the magnitude of the activation energy means and how it differs from the available energy in the system. So just to remind you about the rate law and what we've been talking about. The rate law really is a description about how reactions are really collisions and uh, these collisions will end up with some kind of bond being broken or formed or, or, or even both things going on. And these collisions must have, they must meet a couple criteria. The first one is they must collide in such a way that the proper atoms are involved. And they also must have enough energy during that collision that if they have to break a bond or overcome any repulsions, that they can do this. So you must think about this. There's a minimum collision energy necessary. So let's give that minimum collision energy a name. So we're going to call that the activation energy because that's the amount of energy needed by a collision for it to be successful. So assuming that it hits with the right orientation, this is the next thing. It has to have enough energy for this stuff to break. So if we were to watch a reaction go from reactants to products, we could draw a little diagram and we see that we started with some reactants, we end with some products, and there's an energy difference here. This happens to be an exothermic reaction because the energy went down. We went from a high energy reactants to a low energy reactants. This Minimum energy needed is going to be called the activation energy or sometimes the energy of activation given the symbol E sub A and you can see it on the graph here. It's the energy that the reactants must, when they collide, must have at least this much for it to happen. If they don't have enough, if they can only get to this height on the, uh, if the collision only has this much energy where the cursor is right now, then it can't get to the other side of, the, of this barrier to become uh, products. So let's compare two reactions, which I, I hope you can see right now that they have very different activation energies. Um, energy of activation for the first reaction, reaction one, is greater than that of number two. And just so that we have everything else the same, we've chosen two reactions that have the same change in overall energy from the, from the beginning to the end. So this is the energy the molecules have. Here's where they end. It's the same for both reactions. This is the energy the collision must have. So the energy of activation is not the energy the molecules have, it's the energy the collision must have. And they're related. Okay, so now that we've got that kind of straightened out, here's my favorite graph, as you know, the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. And we can imagine that we have some temperature, there's a distribution of the, of the particles that are involved with the reaction. And of course, since this is the velocity down here, that's related to the kinetic energy that's available. So we could imagine some line here being some random, being some particular amount of energy that the average collision must have to overcome the barrier of these reaction two. Now the question is, where would EA1 stack up here? It's a larger barrier, it's a larger energy, so our molecules would have to collide with more energy, and more energy means a higher velocity. So we'd expect EA1 to have a dotted line over to the right, and you can see right away that when this larger activation energy, less molecules are to the right of it. Less molecules have this average velocity necessary for uh, going over and meeting that criteria of having enough energy to get over the activation energy. So a larger activation energy means less molecules will collide with the appropriate amount of energy. If less molecules are colliding with that amount of energy, there's less reactions going on. There's more wasted collisions. And that will make the reaction slower. So a large activation energy means a slower reaction. Smaller activation energy means faster reaction. All right, when we increase the temperature, we can go from a hot or from a cold to a hot. We see that in either case, we get more molecules because the area under the curve represents the fraction of molecules um, going at a particular velocity. So as we increase the temperature, there's certainly more molecules available to both reaction one and reaction two that will now have enough energy to get over that barrier. So increasing the temperature will make both of these reactions faster because more reactions will have enough energy to break those bonds necessary. So let's summarize this real quickly. So a large activation energy is going to imply for us these things. 
that there's going to be more energy needed to break the necessary bonds. That these collisions are then going to be less likely to have enough energy to do what? Well, to break those bonds. And that means if there's less of them with that energy, that means less collisions will be effective. Therefore, we should expect less reactions to actually happen and we'll have a slower or a smaller rate of reaction. If we increase the temperature though, what we end up with is more reacting species have more energy on average. This means more of the collisions are going to be able to, able to overcome and have enough energy to, to get over the activation energy barrier. And this is going to make the rate of reaction faster and that's why increasing the temperature will make the reactions faster. All right, this said, you should now be well equipped to answer the following assessment. So here we have five reactions, A, B, C, D, and E. We want you to rank them from smallest to largest activation energy and then rank them from slowest to fastest reaction, assuming that they have very similar orientation requirements during their collisions. 